Welcome. In a previous video, I set up Cubic SDR on a Mac, and then I did another video on Windows 10, and that is software to interface with a software-defined radio. So I'm using the RTL SDR version 3, and I'll put a link in the description for that on Amazon. If you use that link, it helps me out a little bit and doesn't cost you anything extra. I'll also put a link in the description to my SDR playlist where you can find those other videos. So in this video, I'm going to be setting up Cubic SDR on Ubuntu 20.04 LTS. And this just came out. I don't know if this works on 18.04 LTS. So these instructions may apply to the older version too. If you're trying it on 18.04 and it does or doesn't work, you can drop me a comment below and let me know and I can maybe you know, try and get it working or something. So the first thing I wanna share here, cause I shared it on my other videos is Cunningham's Law. And it says the best way to get the right answer on the internet is not to ask a question, it's to post the wrong answer. So I want to preface that I'm new to this, so I may not say things right. Um, so if you're watching this, kind of know that you're following along on my journey here. And if you want to politely correct me on anything, you can drop it in a comment below. And if you're new to this, you can read through the comments and hopefully learn some things along with me. So the software I'm going to be using is Cubic SDR. And on Mac and Windows, I went through a GitHub and I downloaded the packages there. But these packages are available on Ubuntu, so I can install it right from within the software uh, Ubuntu software application. So I'll minimize this. So I'm going to talk about the Ubuntu software here and then I'm going to install it using command line. So I'm in Ubuntu software. I can click the magnifying glass and I can just type cubic SDR. And here the package came up. So I could click on this and I could install it here. So I'm going to install it on the terminal in case someone's using an app based system that doesn't have this store on it. They'll know how to do it, although it's pretty intuitive. So on the command line here, you want to type sudo app space update, type in your password, and this will update your system with the latest packages, the package list. Okay, clear my screen, and I'm gonna type sudo space app space install space cubic SDR. There's no dash or anything, just hit enter, and then hit yes. And now it will install all the packages and the dependencies. Okay, so that's finished. Now, if you want to run it from the command line, typically you'd think you'd just type cubic and hit tab, and then it would complete. It doesn't because this actually has a capital letter, the capital C. That kind of threw me off because it seems like almost everything is lowercase on Linux. So you could do that to run it. I'm just going to exit out of the terminal. I'll go down here to show applications. I'll type in cube. It'll come up, then I'll right click on it and I'll say add to favorites. This is optional, obviously. And that will add it over here to the favorites bar or menu. I don't know what they call this thing, the dock. Okay, so now I can plug my SDR into the USB port. I wanna say this is a Lenovo uh, tablet thing. It's a Flex 3, it's pretty weak. Uh, it only has four gig of RAM, it's pretty slow. So it might get a little laggy. If you're running this on a faster computer, which most people will be, it should run better than it's demonstrated here. So I have the RTL SDR plugged into this laptop and then I have the antenna hooked up to it. And I have one lead pointing up, one down. And if you pop the center cap off of it, you can see that the coax in there, the center of that is attached to the antenna pointing up and the ground is pointed to one pointed down. And I'm using the antenna that came with the kit that I put a link to in the description. So I'll open up Cubic SDR. It's going to show the SDR devices. If you plug it in after this opens up, you wanna hit refresh down here, but I'll select this generic RTL 2832U OEM, and I'll hit start. Okay, so what we see down here is the waterfall. It's this area here that's uh, like crawling towards the bottom with all the colors on it. So if we want to listen to a radio station, we can go up here and hit FM, and then we can select one of these. You can see the frequency in green, right around, well, I can't point to it with my mouse, but, so if I click on this, it's gonna be 100.2. Incorporating car care track 12 months. Okay, so you heard there's a little radio there, hopefully through my microphone. I can't play a lot of this because I don't want to get a copyright strike. So I muted it with this M over here on the right side. So in the upper left here we have FM, FM stereo, narrowband FM, AM, and then someone let me know in the last video, this is called lower sideband, upper sideband, double sideband, 
and then I don't know what IQ was. They didn't tell me that. These are for single sideband modulation. Um, I'm just getting into the basics in this video. Uh, I'm not digging that deep. This next section here is kind of a blown up area here. So whatever you've selected, it shows it larger. Then we see the audio here in this uh, upper right hand corner. And in the left here, we see some bookmarks and then we have our waterfall. So we see some numbers here. We have the frequency, the bandwidth, and the center frequency. So the center frequency is the center frequency of the waterfall. The bandwidth is how wide this is. So you can actually drag this here and make it wider. So now we have 500,000 kilohertz and we can drag that back down. So FM is going to be 200 kilohertz. And then we have the frequency over here that we're listening to. So you can click on the top side of these numbers and bottom side to change them. You see how it says 101, 102. You can also hit the space bar and it will open up a little window here and you can type in what you want to hear. So I'll type 1033 MHZ. I'll hit enter. And that brought up, wait, did I type that right? Let me try that again. 103.3 MHZ. There we go. So I'll unmute this for a second. Okay, so we have some music playing. Oh, I had that in the uh, center frequency, it looks like. And I messed up the bandwidth here before, so I can hit that and I can type 200 KHZ. I'll hit enter. We have our bandwidth correct now. And then on either side of this, you see like a little area of the frequency we're listening to. And from what I understand, this is HD radio. So this is like the digital radio you have in a car. I've only really seen it on car radios. Um, I have it in my car and you have HD1, HD2. There are other channels that are digital. So now that I've uh, found 1033, it's a radio station in my town, I may want to bookmark that. So I can go to the left here on bookmark and say new group, and I can say FM radio. I can name that whatever I want. I'll hit okay. So that will start over here on the left, FM radio. And now I'll go to, let's see, 1075. I know it does a radio station. Okay, here's 1075. Let's see if I can get that playing. Okay, so I can go down here to bookmark. I can choose FM radio and it will add a bookmark under FM radio here. So now I have two radio stations. I can click back and forth on them. Double click, there we go, 107.5. Okay, so the next thing I want to talk about is tuning into weather radio. So if I go back to Firefox here, there's this website and I'll put a link in the description of this. And this is the NOAA weather radio frequencies. So if I scroll down, there's a list and I'm in Iowa. So I can select the frequency here. I'll copy it. I'll go back to cubic SDR. I'll go into frequency here. I'll hit space. I'll paste this in. I'll type MHZ. I'll hit enter and I'll unmute. So right now it has static. You can't hear much because this is a narrow band. So I'll hit that and you'll notice this bandwidth went from 200 to 12. So I'll unmute it. 31 degrees Celsius. And, the relative human and now you hear the weather radio. So that'd be a nice one to bookmark. I can go over to bookmark, new group, weather, radio. Of course, it's the only one in my area. So in an emergency situation, uh, if you don't have a weather radio, you could you know, hook up your SDR. That being said, I think they're more important before we all carried cell phones in our pockets and stuff like that. So the final thing I want to go over today is I have a little uh, key fob that controls a light. So you plug this device into an outlet and you plug a lamp into it. And this little key fob has an on and off. So you can turn a light on and off remotely. So I want to tune into that. I'll just go back to FM. And this will be found at around 433. So I'll type four. Oops. Let's try this again. For some reason, I wasn't able to type in that field. I'm not sure why, but I just restarted it. I put in 433 megahertz, and I have this little keychain remote. I'll press a button on it, and you'll see the waterfall here. You see this little spike over here, so I'll click on that, and we see the enlarged view here. So when I press this button, you can see that I'm transmitting. So I'm transmitting the off signal from this key fob. I can also do on. And I don't know how to interpret this or use it. Uh, certainly this is only receiving SDR, so I can't actually send that signal out. But if you wanted to test that your remote was working, you could use something like this. And I found out this works with a garage door remote too. So uh, 433 is used for quite a bit of stuff. So that's all for this video. 
If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments. If you like this video, please click like. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, I'd appreciate it if you could do that. And thanks for watching. Until next time, goodbye.